Carly Russell has been arrested and charged. In this video, we're gonna talk about that arrest, we're gonna talk about those charges, and we're gonna talk about what I'm afraid is going to happen as a result of this. And let's see if you agree with me or disagree. As we know, actions can have consequences, and that's why we're here today. This afternoon, Carly Russell, with the assistance of her attorney, turned herself into the Hoover City Jail, where she was arrested for the following charges. False reporting to law enforcement authorities, Class A misdemeanor, $1,000 bond. Falsely report an incident, a Class A misdemeanor, with a $1,000 bond. Each of these charges carry up to a year in jail and potential fine of $6,000 upon conviction. Ms. Russell was released from jail after posting bond because the only actual charges were misdemeanors. Because the only actual charges were misdemeanors. Because the only actual charges were misdemeanors. Judging from the amount of phone calls and emails that we've received from people all over the country, I know many are shocked and appalled that Ms. Russell is only being charged with two misdemeanors, despite all the panic and disruption her actions caused. Let me assure you, I too share the same frustration. So this police chief seems like he's that happy at all with the charges that were handed down to Carly Russell, the fact that she's out on bail, the fact that these only carry like a year in jail, $6,000 fine. This is actually nothing. This misdemeanor is a slap on the wrist, and it's, it's, very, it's very light punishment, he feels, for what Carly Russell did. But see, this is the law. The law is no one was hurt. There was no loss of life. There was no loss of property. Uh, there was a waste of time and money that was spent. And I'm thinking maybe there can be some type of civil situation where they, they charge Carly Russell for the use of resources and they could bill her for that and give her a bill for that. Sort of like they did Jesse Smollett in his case when he fabricated the story about being jumped by MAGA, which I'm sure you're all very much aware of, Juicy Smollett. But see, my, my concern about this case is further than that. I'm wondering about those officers that report who are subordinates to Mr. DeSerzis. The ones that are upset and frustrated about this case, will they potentially take their frustration out on other people that have nothing to do with Carly Russell, other than skin tone, other than gender? See, these are the concerns that I have about the spillover effect of this. So the idea this is behind us, I want to question that. See, I don't think that human beings can just cut off their emotions. I don't think the officers who were involved in the search for Carly Russell and an abducted child, an abducted child, who sprung into action to do something here, to resolve this case, to bring a child home, and then to find out that their emotions have been toyed with, I don't think they sit too kindly with that. I mean, I don't think anyone from anywhere would sit kindly with that, but particularly Alabama. If I was the Russells, I'd be thinking about relocating where I live. If I was Carly, I'd start thinking about changing my name. These are serious Serious circumstances. So I want to know what you think about this. See, look, I'm concerned about how officers will treat future people that call in, uh, make similar calls and similar claims. I'm concerned about how black women are going to be treated uh, due to this. There has to be spillover on this. Now, I heard some people, they were saying there's going to be some positives from it. The fact that we're having a dialogue and discussion around child abductions. That we're talking about kidnapping. We know the amount of people that goes that go kidnapped and unreported or unrecognized, unreported in the media, but reported to law enforcement, but not reported in the media. The coverage of it uh, is is horrendous. It's very disrespectful to those victims and their families. And I get that, man, totally. So we, have, but this is a two pronged issue because we also got to look at all the people that will be impacted by this. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying Carly Russell should be off the hook totally. I get why people are upset this was a misdemeanor, but it's only a misdemeanor. Not because she got preferential treatment, because she didn't break laws that would come with felonies. Now, if she would have extorted money, demanded a ransom, if someone would have been hurt in the commission of this, if, if 
you know, if people were rushing to the scene and got hurt, uh, there's a number of things that could have happened that she could have never seen, right? That could have taken place, but they did not take place to create that perfect mix of where the charges could be elevated. So my question to you is this. Do you accept this, the charges? Do you accept the bail? Do you accept the fact this is only a misdemeanor? And are you concerned with the ramifications of such a high-profile situation, such a high-profile hoax, and how that impacts others, victims, potential victims, and the relationship between citizens and officers there in Hoover? or Alabama, or the rest of the country for that matter. Let me know what you think in the comment section below. I'm Tim Black, and if you want to know if your news is on point, if you're looking at it from different perspectives, if you don't just want to be walking around in your echo chamber, I want you to look in the comment section below, go to one of my greatest finds, and I want you to become a member of Ground News. Subscribe to Ground News. And be able to know what kind of news you're getting. Know who published it. Know the who's funding that news source. Understand if it's left, right, or center. Understand and be able to track your own consumption of news. So that you can be aware, hey, I'm in a silo. Maybe this isn't good. Let me break out my silo. And you can use the app or you can use the desktop version or the tablet version. It's very convenient. Folks, I can't recommend it enough. They sponsored, not this video, but I'm a partner with them. I want you to check them out. It's in the link description below. That's all I got, folks. I appreciate y'all. My name is Tim Black. See you Sunday, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time for Tim Black's Black Table. Streaming now with Mrs. Black. Tim Black's The Black Table streams live Sundays, 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Times on Facebook and YouTube. Be there, Wolfpack.